up, everybody? Welcome to the Last Days of Warcast. We are Southern California based band, The Last Days of War. I am Mark. I'm Rob. I'm Danny. And Josh couldn't be here today, guys, but check it out. First thing on the agenda, shots. <sighs> How we doing out there, Rob? Oh, uh, just dealing with the smoke. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> I'm dealing with digger. the smoke, too. Yeah, we're dealing yeah. with the smoke, too. Uh, different kinds of smoke, I'm assuming. I'm going to say both. Both. I'm dealing oh. with that type of smoke <laughs> and that type of smoke. Oh, man. Fair enough. How are you guys smoking while well, smoking? Well, Danny and I are uh, currently in the middle of the hot zones of these California fires over here. So <clears throat> I got Mount Doom right here in my backyard going <laughs> Fuck, off. Dude. So. Yeah. And I, I, work, I work right on the borderline of where this Highland fire is going, too. So it's fun. You know, <clears throat> yeah, oh, sounds fun. Yeah, it's when you you go outside right now and it's just kind of everything looks it's just orange. You know, everybody, it every looked like stranger look like Stranger Things in the evening last night. It was kind of crazy. Everybody at work is outside at the smoking table, like this air quality sucks. <laughs> you can't smoke a cigarette. <laughs> of course, <laughs> they're like, damn. I can't even enjoy this fucking vape right here. This yeah, all the smoke. Fucking, my lungs are my lungs are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Smoke. So before we start jumping into things today, guys, I just wanted to take the time to make sure that we plug our pay, our uh, not our Patreon, our Kickstarter today. Uh, we are what on our second week of the Kickstarter, we've raised about three hundred dollars. We're looking to hit the first the first tier at least of two grand so that it can get going. So to those who have. Already supported, thank you so much. Uh, to those who are looking to do that, there's links in the bio to everything. If you have any questions, feel free to DM the band. We will get them answered for you. Uh, guys, do you have anything else to add to this? Um, every little bit helped. And uh, and I just want to say thank you for helping this pre-sale kick off. Uh, it's an awesome start. Um, it's 300 more dollars than I expected. So, <laughs> and, you know. The the more the merrier. Um, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks if you have. Thank you if you have, and if you haven't yet, uh, get it figured out and get in there. And you know, I think there's uh, a couple weeks left. Figure so. it out. Figure it out. Figure it out. Let's make it happen. Before we send Rob to go beat you up, it's going. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's making making house calls. Oh man, it's more of a kick stopper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'll come over there and kick your ass. <laughs> Uh, please don't. Here's ten bucks. All right. Uh, uh, thanks. A, See you later. Enjoy the album. Kickstarter. <laughs> Enjoy the yeah, album. There you go. <laughs> Here's some music for you. Well, I'm whooping your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to my demo tape. <laughs> your ass too. <laughs> oh man. So Rob, what's uh, what are we getting into today, man? Uh, I think today we're gonna get into what everybody else is talking about. Lincoln Park getting a new singer. All right, all right. I thought you were going to say herpes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. No, let's not get into that because that, we can never get off of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, we're going to be talking about how, uh, well, we we announced that they dropped a timer that they were going to be doing something. And there was a countdown clock on their website. And then everyone started speculating, like, oh, who's the new singer? Who's the new singer? And it built up so much of a hype that they had to announce it, right? Right. So <clears throat> they they announced the singer, and uh, there are mixed reviews. There, there are some people that are so full-blown Team Chester that it doesn't matter who it is, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, talking about a ba band as big as Linkin Park, I mean, even... You know, if half their fan base goes, you know, this isn't for me, I, you know, I think they're still going to be doing it. I think they're know? still going to so, be all right. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I mean, I think, I think they're going to be doing it. So, and it'll be successful and we'll see what happens, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see what the, uh, the whole album <clears throat> brings, you know? Curious to see how far, because that song they released, it, it, it sounds very like reminiscent of Chester, right? And, I'm ready to see like, okay, great. I feel like at whatever capacity she, she fills that role and I'm waiting to see what else she could do. Does anybody remember her name? Uh, I can't think of it right now. Uh, Emily. Emily. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. It's, I think it's Emily Armstrong. 
something? Yes. Yeah. I believe that's it. Okay, yeah. So um I enjoyed the new song. I, I liked it. Like you said, it's got it's very reminiscent of, you know, uh, Chester yeah, in a Lincoln way Park. of Lincoln Park. It sounds it just sounds like Lincoln Park. But I just hope that she takes the time to mold herself into it. That she doesn't feel that she's got to emulate Chester in things. I I just want her to be her. Be her, find her own find herself, find who who she is in this band and let's go, you know? Let's let's see what you got. But um I think if she tries just to be a Chester 2.0, it's going to be kind of hard to get new people to listen or or their fan base, you know what I mean? The diehards uh I saw a bit of the live, the live stream that they did. I thought she did well. Um, so a lot of people are really, uh, I guess, upset that they're playing the older stuff. Well, you guys, she just joined this band. So they didn't write three albums worth of stuff to where they can just play all new songs. They just, <laughs> they're, they're just getting started. They're going to have to play their hits. And I would think that people in the audience would want those hits to be played so they can sing along anyways. Everyone's going to be singing Chester's parts. It's, it's a, it's a sing along. It's a tribute to Chester. You know what I mean? Uh, when they do stuff like that, Rob, what do you think? Yeah, I, I 100% agree. Like you gotta let her be her and, and have her own sound because that's what the band welcome in as their <clears throat> singer. Mm -hmm. And, I don't think it really matters what you or I or anyone else really fucking think as long as the band is like, yeah, she, she fits what we're looking for. And that's, that's all that matters. Then you guys make music. Um, but it brings up the topic of when you do replace a singer, uh, you know, because they pass, you know, where uh, untimely death, uh, <clears throat> unalive, sorry. Um, but at an untimely passing where you're just like, oh, what do you do? How do you move on? And there's been bands in the past that have, uh, done some amazing things with it and still move forward as musicians. It's like, uh, the doors, for example, everybody knew about Jim Morrison and his presence and was inspired by his music and what he brought to rock and roll and to to music in general and so those people that he inspired then uh came together and uh each took turns singing different songs while the rest of the original doors members still played you know what i'm saying like stuff like that where the band keeps going um <clears throat> acdc you know where you you just get another singer in to fill that spot and it's like you guys can keep growing, um, Danny. Um, well, I think I think with uh, in the case of Lincoln Park with Emily, I think the live stream. I think uh, I like what she did on the album. It, like I said, it, that song in particular is very reminiscent of Chester. But like I said, I'm excited to see what she brings. But in the live aspect of it, I think it was show one, and I think she's got a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion on that one. Uh, I feel like I feel like if you're going to be at the level of Chester, that's one thing. If you're going to be at the level where you could be a singer, a caliber singer at Lincoln Park, I think she could be that. I think she needs, I think it's just, I think everybody's got to give her some time. You know, yeah. she just got the wheels on. Give it some time. I think, uh, I think if you view it like this is, like you said, more of like a, you know, a tribute to Chester, I would have loved to see them release those new songs that they did with Chester months ago. I would have loved to see them wrap this into that album and have songs that release with Chester on it and then new stuff with her. Yeah. And it kind of be this, I felt like it could, it was a missed opportunity to make a much better like introduction <clears throat> and transition, you know? Um, so when you're talking about bands that lose their singer, I mean, we've got Alice in Chains. Alice in Chains is still at it. I actually saw them two years ago, maybe, with uh, Korn, I think, and uh, they were great. Sounded good. Sounded like Lane, but you're talking about a band that <clears throat> literally got a guy that sounded like the other guy. Yeah. You know? I don't know if how much Linkin Park's going to try to do that moving forward, you know? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
Suicide, Suicide Silence is another one. Uh, mm -hmm. Mitch Lucker passed, I believe it was like Halloween, like 2017, I think. And uh, they've been rolling with, uh, what's his name, Eddie uh, from, I remember what band he was originally in. But uh, he's been rolling with them for a while and they've been doing it. And to me, it wasn't really such a direct, you know, hey, this guy sounds exactly like this guy. It's just mm -hmm. they're both like, you know, deathcore, metal, you know, uh, singers. So it was similar in that way, but they're two totally different singers, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, don't get me wrong, where you have bands uh, that I feel a little bit more connected to were like Snot, for example. Um, yeah. Being in that new metal era and being a fan of Snot and then you, a, a present of a singer, you know, remove now who do you get to fill that energy like who else could bring that sound that energy that vibe that that person brought <clears throat> it's big shoes to fill because when not brought in tommy vex i uh personally was disappointed uh one because of you know being told i didn't get a tryout because they already found a guy uh, but more upset that they settled for Tommy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but then they got Carl, and I think Carl does an amazing job, um, mm. or did an amazing mm. job. Um, but uh, and, and then you got Static X, where you got a presence like Wayne with the hair and the vibe, and it was he was the whole point of Static X, and even continued when the rest of the guys left. You know what I'm saying? Like he was doing it, and the original band comes back in and says, yeah, we're, we're doing Static X again. Uh, Blink did it with, uh, what, Tom DeLong left, and they got, what's his name, Matt uh, Skiba or whatever from, uh, <clears throat> I'm drawing the blank. Uh, <clears throat> but he came in and, um, I don't know, kind of similar, but, you know, kind of did his own thing, I felt like. They did a few albums with him, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. but Tom didn't die. Like no, no, yeah, but we're no, just saying we're just saying in general, like switching singers, yeah, in bands. Oh. Like you're saying that somebody that stepped in and did a good job. Like, is there anybody you can think of that stepped in and did a better job than the original? Uh, I mean, ACDC. I think they honed in their sound and dialed <clears throat> it in, and I was, and became more. You know. Yeah. I'm not I'm not the biggest ACDC fan, so I didn't even know that. I thought that the, the singer that they had has always been their singer. I didn't know that. I didn't know that he so he replaced it's somebody just, else? It's two different guys. It sound like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like the earlier earlier songs sound slightly different and it's not just the recording quality and just like Oh wow, this sounds cleaner. It's like, oh, you can really hear the rasp in his voice. I'm like, well, that's not his voice anymore. Oh. Kill Switch uh, is one for me where I want them to take Jesse and Howard and just run with both of them. Uh, you know, they they've done a couple of shows where they both go on stage together and do songs together, which I think is pretty yeah. dope. Yeah, let's let's make it an uh, album. Let's go. I love man. Howard is so fucking good, dude. He's one of like my favorite vocalists. He's so talented, dude. That range that that dude has and control in his voice is amazing. Um, when you're talking about bands that switched, it's always interesting when it happens and then, like, throughout the duration of the new singer, they kind of become an entirely different band. So an example of that would be Emerosa, Danny. Emerosa was with Johnny Craig, and they were very post-hardcore. And now that right. now that Brandon's in it, they are more, I would say, more along the lines of like pop, like a like a pop rock band. And right. uh, I personally enjoy the Emerosa now more than the Emerosa with Johnny Craig. And I love Johnny Craig. Like I, I get I mean, I get it. He's a whole other subject <laughs> He's a, as, as a person. But like uh, my cousin and I have this running joke where like my favorite genre of music is every band that Johnny Craig's been kicked out of. You know, so like, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. But um, as, can you right. think of any other examples where like, not only did the lead singer change, but because of that singer, the music itself changed? Audio Slave? That, that's a good one. Well, wait, 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 wait. Keeping the same name or changing the name? Uh, 
uh, let's go keeping the same name because Amorosa kept the same name. Uh, Van Halen. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's a good one. Yeah. They definitely they they definitely changed from the singer and then they did keep the name. Yeah. Mm. I hear um, I hear that Van Halen's releasing a new song, uh, like the last song that uh, Alex and him recorded. Really? Mm. Yeah. But I think it's just going to be an instrumental or something like that. Mm. That's interesting. Hey, Danny, I wanted to go back really quick and talk. You were talking about how you had wished that they that Lincoln Park had released uh, the the unreleased stuff with Chester. I thought it would have been a great opportunity because I'm sure that there's songs that were not finished by Chester. Maybe he had a verse or just the chorus. I thought it would have been a cool thing to do to have her write parts to the that were missing for songs that he had started. You know, kind of transition both of them into the same song. We don't have an album yet. I mean, when I when they I say, listen, hey, I don't know what Lincoln Park has on deck. I don't know what they've had recorded. I don't know what pieces they have that they could put together. I don't know any of that. But listening to Linkin Park over the years and like what they did with reanimation, you know what I'm saying? And how they put that album together and made that like, here, here's remixes and other versions of the older stuff that we've done. Here you go. And how they put that together. I, I wouldn't put it past them to be doing these ideas once the album dropped. Yeah. Where <clears throat> Chester is going to be on this track with her or, right. you know, you you may still get Chester track on the album. I'm just, I'm we just don't saying know. If, they, if they have that in their pocket, that would have been a really cool thing to do. That's in my opinion. <clears throat> yeah, you know? for and, sure. And don't get me wrong. Didn't they just drop like two, three other songs prior to her joining? Like, we're, they're I, still putting out stuff from Lincoln Park. Yeah, with right. Chester. So don't. Yeah, be well, they too... did. Was that song lost? There was like one or two others they released recently. <clears throat> yeah, you know, a few months back. You know, Have so you... it's one of those things. Like I, I would just I I reserve judgment until they drop an album and say this is us now and this is what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scientology. And, and then like, didn't she come out and support for Danny Masterson? Yeah, she came out and like supported Danny Masterson, which she, she apologized she a, for. Yeah, go ahead. Well, she she made a statement, and I mean, whatever she apologized for it, but she did say that she went to one of the court hearings on behalf, you know, to support him. Mm. And then she basically said that everything that she heard in there, she was like, I walked out of that courtroom, and that was the last time I ever talked to him or – she was like that was it and it's like well i mean you, you gotta you gotta <clears> give it up to her in the point where she if that's the case then you know do we really sit there and slam her for that yeah you know i i think it's a case of her not knowing absolutely everything that was going on like you said she went on behalf of him and then heard absolutely everything that this guy was accused that's of and convicted for yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. People are always so quick to jump and judge on people for, you know, I'm assuming she was attempting to do the right thing before she heard everything else that got released about him. And, uh, you know, it's a case of trying to be there for your friend and then realizing, whoa, shit, that guy was kind of a piece of shit. Maybe I don't want to be there for him anymore. I'm sure we've all been through that, you know. She just happens to oh, be yeah. under a mic. I'm sure. I'm sure she just happens to be under a microscope for it right now, and everyone's just looking for a reason to cancel her because they don't want her to be the singer in general. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah. nobody can replace Justin. <laughs> I did hear that uh, that Mike Shinoda came out. I don't know if it was on their channels or their website or something, but um, on social media or something, but he put out a statement kind of like, basically saying like what some of the people are doing are, is disrespectful. Yeah. You know, and it's always as an artist, that's always kind of a hard, that's a, that's a big decision to go out there and tell your fans that they're being disrespectful. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you gotta be careful with that one, you know, because yeah. if, uh, I think you've run the risk of looking like an asshole, you know? Yeah. Did you see that <clears throat> apparently, uh, Chester son has released a statement about, Lincoln Park as well too. Well, and a lot of that was about the Danny Masterson stuff and the Scientology stuff, and he's saying that like, you know, Chester wouldn't be down for this at all. Yeah. You know? 
I don't know about the music side of it, but what those things signify, he was like, he wouldn't be happy about that at all. You know, mm. as far as the music goes, I don't know. He was saying something about Mike Shinoda has been shutting him out and stuff like that. As far as like being to being able to <clears throat> communicate with him about what's going on, you know? Yeah. So basically he's like saying like, you know, Mike's killing his father's legacy. I, I think is what he's kind of coming out and saying. Yeah, that's a tough spot to be in, dude, because in the long run, it's like I get you want to be respectful to his son. It's Chester's well, kid. Well, imagine, imagine but, uh, Sublime, right, with Rome, mm -hmm. and then Rome's leaving, and then here comes Brad's son to do it now, right? And totally, what if, what if Brad's son was, like, talking shit on Rome when, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of a weird thing, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, like I was like I, I like I said, but it's I, a little I just different think, though. Go ahead. Go ahead. Here's here's where I think it's different. It's because Sublime welcomed in Bradley's son, mm. uh, whereas Lincoln Park never welcomed in Chester's son, and maybe no, to and play I, at the I benefit show that. or whatever. But like, I get you there. Yeah. So, like, in all honesty, it'd be like if one but, of you guys passed and then your kid starts saying, like, hey, I don't I don't want you guys getting another singer. To when that. Sublime with Rome was happening, Brad's <clears throat> son wasn't involved at that point. So, it's, like I said, yeah, one or the other. No, yeah. you know, I mean, to each his own, like, you, you see the offspring of musicians come up and eventually – take their place. Well, Jason look at Bonham, Slipknot. Slipknot, you know, I think that's, Slipknot. I think we're ready for that to, I think it's about to happen pretty soon here. Yeah. You know, start you, seeing some of their kids step into those spots, you know? So you, you, you see it happening all the time, especially in music. And, and that's what we teach our, our kids. Like, Hey, this is how you play music. This is how you, you feel it this is the rhythm you got to have timing you got you know you build it and you listen to it and enjoy it and like yes and then they build an appreciation themselves and that's you know i i 100 understand and get that but if the business agreement is between a band and like hey we're going to keep writing music if one of us passes and you know keep moving forward, get somebody else in the shoe. Depends on how big you get, but fans are not always going to be receptive. They're going to have a place in their heart for the original singer. 100% understand. But like everything in life, you got to keep moving forward. You got to move on. Like, yeah. do, do you want Soundgarden to stop playing just because Chris Cornell's gone? And it's just like, I, you know, and it's just like, it's unfortunate. One of the greatest singers of our, our time, but do the rest of the guys have to put it on hold? Uh, no, but good luck filling those shoes. Like yeah. that's yeah, a well, big like I said, I think, I think you're going to see that some of their fan base loses interest and goes away. And I think that they're the, the portion that do enjoy it are going to stay. And I think that there's a thing coming too where I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, parents out there that grew up on Lincoln Park. And I think their kids are going to be growing up on this version of Lincoln Park. So yeah. if they could, if they could do that right, I think that they're going to, yeah. I saw this great, I saw this great TikTok, Danny, of what, what exactly what you're talking about of this guy, this father and his daughter watching the new Lincoln Park. And it said, Chester was my childhood, and now she'll be hers. You know? Yeah. Like, I, I thought that that was kind of cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> but, uh, Rob. Um, I, th I think also, I think going with a with a female singer, I think, was the best choice they could have done. I, I agree. Yeah. Then there's also the alternate route, where you switch out the singer, change the name. Yeah. I mean, uh, like Danny mentioned earlier, Audio Slave. You switch out the singer for Rage and put in Chris Cornell. It's... Well, ask, ask yourself this. If you were holding on to the name and all of the intellectual property that is Linkin Park with all the fan base it comes with, would you want to start over? <laughs> no, dude. Yeah, I feel you there, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I mean, I that's mean, you I'm got a point. Saying, like, 
you got like a point. You, like you said, you know, unfortunately, Chester passed, you know, and like you said, do they do they need to change it because some dude on the on social media says, oh, I'm upset that you didn't change the name. I mean, to me, to me, if I look at it like a business decision, I think they made the best business decision they could. I wouldn't change the name. Mm. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, man. <clears throat> uh, Rob, you would, oh, man, you had said something. Oh, yeah. When you were talking about the band members that are still around being being able to move on and continue doing what they love. Uh, that's mm -hmm. where, I, that's where I come from on this as well is like, yes, it's sad, you know, Chester passed and s some say Chester was Lincoln park, but the whole band was Lincoln park and they all loved being Lincoln park and making music together. And if they want to continue to do that, I think that they should be allowed to, um, fans, have a tendency to gatekeep bands. You get to a certain level and it's like, oh, I liked their first album better before they changed or before they sold out or whatever it is they want to say. Uh, no artist owes anything to the, to the fans in that perspective, in that way. As far, and what I mean by that is if we, if we make art that, that somebody connected to, that's awesome. That's great. But in turn, it does not mean that they get to dictate where we go from there. You know what I mean? We're still going to create, no, we're, yeah. still, we're still going to be our own creative outlet. We're still going to do what we make and what we love. And hopefully that new stuff connects with you as well. So. Yeah, you can kiss my ass. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna play what we yeah. want, okay? You're kissing yeah. my ass. Fuck the fans. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's, not what, that's, not what that's, that's not what I'm trying to say. That's that's not what I'm trying to say. But you but you get no, but you get what I'm like, saying. Like yeah, you're an if, artist, if, you're gonna do your art and that's it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. If we feel like writing a twelve minute song, hey, yeah, it's a twelve minute song, enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Like Or don't. Skip like, <laughs> that song. I might not sit. I'm not gonna sit through my own 12 minutes. Okay? <laughs> Daddy's like, <laughs> Daddy goes, please don't, Rob. Please don't. <laughs> like, Bro, do <laughs> oh, I will play those jams on the jukebox. <laughs> I'll be that guy, and I won't even be at your establishment when I play them. <laughs> Uh, Rob, we can't have a 30 minute set and play two songs, bro. That ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're not, we're not like, tool. Watch <laughs> we're going to play side A and side B. Like, just those two songs? Yeah. Just those two songs. <laughs> you, you get the album and it seriously unfolds and it's eight, you know, it's eight out vinyls to cover the album because all songs are 15 minutes long, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Danny, it reset my timer. I think we're around the half hour mark. I think before it reset, we were around 20 minutes. Am I correct in that? Yep, we're right around there. Yeah, for sure. Is there anything else that you guys yep. would like to add to this conversation before we uh, start wrapping it up? Uh, tonight at midnight, we're dropping a new song? Correct. That's where I was going to go next, yeah. So tonight at midnight, guys, being that this drops on a Thursday, tonight at midnight, uh, same drops friday the 13th please check it out uh let us know what you think go leave a comment share use it as a, a music for any of your videos it all helps uh thank you guys so much you guys have been so well um you guys have been just great when it comes to the way we've been releasing music lately and the way you guys have been sharing it and just all the positivity and we can't thank you guys enough danny you got anything to say about it uh you know stay out of the fire you know for sure uh real quick i just want to say Happy birthday, lovey. I love you. Uh, since this drops on her birthday. Uh, Happy sure. Birthday. Happy birthday. So, yeah. Uh, we're going to be celebrating at the casino. So, we're going to have some fun. Uh, you kids, be safe. Thank you for all the love. That's what's up. See you guys. Next week. So, once again, Friday the 13th, same drops. And if you're in Southern California, Saturday the 14th, we will be getting played by Mike Z on 96.7 KCAL on Wired in the Empire. Normally we're the, the we're the last song to play on his uh, show, so it's around eleven fifty five. Tune in, check it out once again, and thank you, Mike Z, and thank you, ninety six seven. Halloween oh, you night know the at the district. Part? Halloween night wait, wait, at the wait, district. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Back this up real quick. I'm not in Southern California, but I could download the app and still listen to it. That's correct, and guys. Download, download you guys the app. can do it anywhere. Else. Uh, exactly. Just check your check your times because the times. 
are different. So it's like 10 o'clock our time. Exactly. And well, and while we're here promoting stuff, we also have two shows coming up. We are playing the district in Redlands, California with a system of a down tribute band called system of a clown, um, along with many other great bands. And we are also playing November 2nd, at Goodfellas in Rancho Cucamonga, and we are very excited to announce that we are playing with Rob Fractures, my boys from San Diego, Wales Vagina, and we got the unit. Uh, but the big, the big announcement, we got our boys in Sangre, who I have personally shared a stage with way back in the day, originally at Goodfellas. So we're gonna bring back 20 years of history playing this show with our boys in Sangre this night too. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Great night. Come on out. It's only 10 bucks at the door. First come, first serve, 21 and up. All right. I swear we're done trying to sell shit to you guys. We'll catch you next week. Later, we're out. (laughs)